بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم thank you very much for the to the organizing committee for inviting me to give this talk in this meeting and thank you very much Dr. Khalid for your word my talk will be directed towards the new updates on the classification of lymphoid neoplasm um, and uh, I will start with, uh, you know, I don't have any uh, disclosure to, to, to uh, uh, say. Uh, so, uh, as we know, the classification of lymphoma and generally the hematolymphoid uh, organ or uh, diseases uh, classification is very complex. And it is not a new uh, topic. It had been carried for long, long time with many efforts uh, started with the you know, old uh, known figures in, in, uh, in, in hematopathology. Um, however, things going, you know, into uh, uh, many efforts to produce uh, classifications until the WHO uh, uh, gather all these efforts and start to work with the uh, uh, International uh, Lymphoma Group uh, to produce a, a standard or, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 classification that can help worldwide. And it will be like a common language that everybody is used uh, uh, and we can understand uh, the, um, uh, the hematopathology uh, uh, or hematolymphoid neoplasm uh, classification in everywhere, uh, everywhere in the world. So uh, regardless on, uh, uh, from where this report come, uh, we are talking the same language. So the international standards for cancer diagnosis are contained within the WHO classification of tumor. And it was published by the International Agency of Research uh, 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 on Cancer, the IARC. Um, and why I'm saying that? Because we want to understand what is going on recently so that um, I think if we all understand why we have two classifications now, this will make the life uh, uh, easy for us. It, uh, uh, I seen since the morning sessions that there is uh, a lot of confusion in this regard and what to follow. And so please calm down and let us discuss it uh, uh, historically so that we know why this happened. Um, it is known worldwide the WHO as WHO Blue Box, and it is not only for lymphoma. It is, as you know, for many uh, uh, cancer uh, uh, classifications in almost every organ. And the primary diagnostic method in the Blue Box uh, as a whole has been histopathology mainly, but other disciplines have increasingly large role to play either from the lab side or even from the clinical side. And especially in hematolymphoid, the clinician input is very, very important. And without it, the diagnosis or this classification cannot be uh, done. So the International Classification of Disease Series of Coding System and the WHO classification tumor actually started since long time. And as you know, the first WHO or blue book for hematolymphoid is the third Edition. So what, where is the first edition and where is the second edition? Actually, there is none. It is included in the IARC effort to produce the blue box, which had been started since 1967 by making a group to make the blue box for different organs. But at that time, hematolymphoid wasn't included. It was really based on the old efforts of classification, especially for the international um, uh, lymphoma group and the real uh, classification was, uh, you know, the worldwide known, at least to most of the, of the world. So the first edition was from 1967 to 1981. Then the second edition of the Blue Box, which also didn't include the uh, WHO, was from 82 to 2000 until 2002. Then the third edition, st which started building up from 2000, um, uh, and uh, the classification of the hematolymphoid first classification or first blue book, which was the third edition from the WHO series at, uh, 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 at all. So it, it was in 2001. Then the fourth edition uh, uh, period from 2006 to 2018. Then from 2018 till now, we are in the era of the fifth edition of the blue box. So we will go 
and see why, what, what happened. I'm discussing that because this is what we received or what you read uh, for the past uh, few months, that we have at one time two different classifications of the hematolymphoid neoplasm. One is the international consensus classification, which is known as ICC, and the other one is the fifth edition of the WHO. So what is going on? There is something going on behind that that I will elaborate it for you so that you will understand what happened. So this is the first um, uh, blue book, which is the third edition in 2001, and it is based on the real classification. And this is very important because actually real classification was used by the you know, both societies which actually built up the WHO, the Society of American Hematopathologists and the European Association of Hematopathologists, or for Hematopathologists. Actually, they are the one who built up the structure of the WHO, and most of the other system classifications based on the hematolymphoid, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, flow of diagnosis and categories. So they use the same structure because it is very well uh, uh, written uh, classification. Then 2008, the new classification appeared at the time of the fourth edition of the series. And that's why in 2017, we didn't have the fifth edition. Actually, it is the revised fourth edition. Why is that? Because it appeared at the same period of the fourth edition series. That's why they call it revised. Otherwise, it is totally different um, uh, uh, format. Then what happened is currently now we have the uh, 2022 uh, release the um, uh, beta version of the fifth edition that soon inshallah it will be, it will be uh, released. So what happened in this actually, the effort had been made widely, but why we have the ICC um, uh, 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 classification? So what are the challenges happened during these you know, years? The information overload huge data actually coming, especially from the genomic and molecular uh, and cytogenetics, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, advances. And that lead to information overload that it need to be coped by large uh, uh, group. Variable quality and relevance, data standardization and harmonization. And also we should know that the WHO classification of tumor is taxonomy. It is built on hierarchical uh, way that it should be, it should follow an evidence-based uh, 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 format. It rely on histology, molecular pathology, radiology, epidemiology, and other discipline. So for, man than, for more than 20 years, the classification was directed by the Clinical Advisory Committee, the CAC, which is actually uh, um, uh, part of the Society of American Hematopathologists and European Association of Hematopathologists. Um, uh, then the IARC ends its coll collaboration with, the, with those societies in 2021, with many reasons to elaborate. They said, now we need more blood, because actually the IARC had, had a new uh, uh, structure and the new blood coming to the IARC, so they decide to, again, to change the committees that is, uh, that is working together to form these uh, classifications. So the new editorial board will include 27 inter international expert members from all around the world. This is their aim. They said that the, uh, uh, the previous uh, classification was done by CAC, although they are very known experts, no doubt of that, but they, it is not representing the entire uh, uh, world. They need a new blood to, to come. And they have background in the diagnostic, investigative hematopathology, molecular pathology, cytogenetics, cancer biology, adult and pediatric hemato hematology oncology. And some of the hematolymphoid experts have been leaders in the Society of Hematopathology and European Association because they start to send invitation to the old group who are forming the CAC, uh, who, are, who were responsible for the previous uh, classifications. However, none of the former editors of the CAC uh, um, uh, are included because either they reject their invitation or actually they didn't receive invitation. And therein lies the rub between the two groups. So 
What was the objection of the Society of American Hematopathologists and European Association? This is unilateral decision from the IARC. They decide to change the, the, the uh, uh, board. And actually, they are a small group of pathologists without input from the C CAC. All right. So what the reaction happened? A significant number of the current and past officers and well-respected members of, the, of both societies resigned or declined the invitation to join the IARC expert editorial board or to participate as an author for the fifth edition of the WHO uh, of tumor. They call it hematolymphoid um, uh, classification. Did they stop there? No. They decide or, or, or already we built the structure and all we have, we, we already have the expertise. So we will continue our work independent from the WHO. So they made meeting of approximately 120 international pathologists, clinical scientists, experts, was held in September 2001 in Chicago, uh, and followed by publishing the ICC. So th this is why we have the ICC. So actually the ICC is done or, or, or uh, produced by the, w, the previous WHO uh, authors and experts. So what we have now, this is what we have actually. It is not real fight, it is scientific fight between two major groups, the, now the WHO and the ICC. So what I will go over uh, uh, through uh, quickly, I mean, because actually, unfortunately, the time cannot help me, to elaborate what are the changes related to both classifications. I will start with the ICC consensus, and this is the reference that I built my presentation uh, from. So classical Hodgkin lymphoma, as you see here, it is the same classification. However, there is one entity is missing. The nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma is not included in um, uh, uh, the ICC classification. It is not anymore according to the ICC Hodgkin. It is now non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And this is really very important to change because now we are changing it from Hodgkin to non-Hodgkin. Why is that? Because the evidence say it has a very close relation and uh, um, uh, uh, biologically and uh, genetic to non-Hodgkin lymphoma, especially to T cell rich, histocyte rich, large B cell lymphoma. However, the other subtypes of the classical known classical Hodgkin lymphoma uh, uh, still, uh, uh, still there. Mature B cell neoplasm, as you can see here, those in red color are the changed changes from the previous 2017 uh, classification. I will not go through the um, uh, uh, plasmacytic, as you can see here, plasma cell neoplasm, uh, because Dr. Uh, Conrad already um, uh, 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 briefed us on that. Uh, however, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things that they prefer to use multiple myeloma rather than plasma cell myeloma. This is different from the WHO. All right. So what are the main, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 changing? Now, if we look carefully, we find splenic B cell lymphoma and leukemia unclassifiable. This is an entity that we can use instead of splenic diffuse. Uh, 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 if it has two, two different subtypes the splenic diffuse red bulb uh, small B cell lymphoma and the hairy cell uh, leukemia uh, variant. And this is this category is very much different from the change used in, in the WHO that we will discuss uh, uh, in a while. Um, primary cutaneous marginal zone lymphoproliferative disorder now becoming an independent or distinct uh, uh, classification. So it was previously under the malt lymphoma, the extranodal marginal zone lymphoma of mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. The skin uh, was under that category, but now the evidence say that it is, uh, or it, have, it has a different um, uh, biology and uh, genetic and from the uh, extra node. That's why it's become a uh, distinct uh, 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 category. And they use lymphoproliferative instead of lymphoma because it's behave very much indolent. That's why it really doesn't need to be categorized as lymphoma. That means, please wait and see how the patient um, uh, behave before you treat. This is 
uh, one of the, of the uh, changes. Now, follicular lymphoma, <coughs> now, follicular lymphoma has um, uh, uh, kept its uh, 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 you know, grading system in the ICC. However, in the WHO, it had totally different grading, which, which is much better, I mean, and easy and relieving for us um, than the uh, old uh, grading. We will discuss it uh, uh, later. And the follicular lymphoma, it had under, uh, under it is the in situ follicular lymphoma, um, uh, follicular neoplasia, and the duodenal uh, type. What is new that the testicular follicular lymphoma is not anymore under the follicular lymphoma uh, uh, um, uh, category. It is a distinct uh, uh, entity. Um, uh, that's why it's become a separate or separated from the usual or the common uh, follicular lymphoma. And um, there is also a, a, a provisional that with the underlying, anything with the uh, uh, underlying means provisional, that uh, there are follicular lymphoma cases which had predominantly large cells and they lack PCL2 rearrangement and they are expressing CD23 um, um, uh, and they call it uh, uh, PCL2 rearranged negative CD23 positive follicle center lymphoma in the ICC. And this is equivalent to 3B in the old um, uh, classification, and it has um, uh, uh, included in the um, uh, WHO uh, under the uh, 3B category. <coughs> uh, large B-cell lymphoma with IRF, uh, or mom, uh, IRF4 or MOM1 uh, rearrangement, it is now becoming more, um, you know, uh, had more publications around it and more understanding. That's why it's, it's become a, a distinct, previously it was provisional uh, entity, now it is distinct uh, 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 entity. Large B-cell lymphoma with LFNQ aberration, which previously Burkitt-like lymphoma with LFNQ aberration. Evidence says now it is more related to diffuse large cell lymphoma more than Burkitt lymphoma. That's why they remove Burkitt-like from its nomenclature and they make it uh, uh, under the category of uh, large B cell uh, lymphoma. So it's become large B cell lymphoma with 11 Q uh, uh, aberration. Nodular site predominant um, uh, uh, B cell lymphoma, which previously known as Hodgkin, uh, nodular site predominant Hodgkin. Now this is the uh, nomenclature in the, in the ICC. Primary diffuse large B cell lymphoma of the uh, uh, testis. Now it's become a uh, separate entity from diffuse large B cell lymphoma in OS, and it has very strong relation to uh, uh, primary uh, 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 diffuse large B cell lymphoma of the uh, central nervous system. Uh, they have different, again, approach in the WHO, totally different from the ICC. That's why we need to look at this very, very carefully. Uh, HHV8 uh, negative, ABV negative primary effusion. Um, um, uh, based uh, lymphoma is now a, a distinct entity. We know that primary effusion uh, lymphoma should be HHV8, at least HHV8 positive. But uh, with accumulated evidence, there are many cases as reported with HHV8 negative and also EBV neg negative. So they found it, it, is, uh, it, it should be this, uh, made uh, at least now as a provisional uh, distinct uh, entity. Uh, EBV positive mucocutaneous uh, uh, ulcer was provisional before. Now it's become distinctive uh, uh, entity in the ICC. And EBV positive uh, polymorphic B cell lymphoproliferative disorder. Uh, now it is a, a gray zone between hyperplasia or reactive lymph node uh, and, and lymphoma. You have feature that you cannot say it is lymphoma. It d do not really fulfill the complete criteria of lymphoma. And at the same time, you cannot leave it uh, uh, just uh, 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 reactive. And they do express EBV. So they found solution for that, for these cases, that we do really uh, see them in, in practice. So it is EBV positive uh, polymorphic B cell lymphoproliferative disorder. That means it is not yet uh, 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 considered as lymphoma. Uh, uh, so it, it had been put as a separate uh, entity. High-grade uh, B-cell lymphoma with MYC and BCL2 uh, uh, rearrangement now become um, uh, uh, separated from uh, uh, MYC and BCL6 
they both in the 2017 classification uh, are one entity. But now the evidence say that uh, uh, MIC and BCL2 is totally behave differently. However, MIC with BCL6, although it's considered double hit here, but they do behave very well to diffuse Arbicin lymphoma uh, uh, in OS. That's why uh, it, it had been uh, separated uh, in the ICC classification. And lastly, in the B cell are the mediastinal gray zone lymphoma, which uh, replaced the uh, B cell uh, lymphoma unclassi unclassifiable with features intermediate between diffuse Arbicin lymphoma and classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Now it's become mediastinal gray zone lymphoma. And the, ad and the uh, advice or recommendation behind that, if you have similar lymphomas outside the mediastinum, it should be considered diffuse large cell lymphoma in OS and not gray zone uh, lymphoma. Gray zone lymphoma, it's only uh, mediastinal according to this uh, update. In the, in the T cell, T -cell neoplasm, there are quite uh, you know, uh, uh, few uh, uh, changes. We will start with uh, the uh, uh, chronic uh, lymphoproliferative disorders of uh, uh, NK lymphoma. This is a new provisional uh, uh, entity. The EBV uh, positive uh, T cell and K cell lymphopathic disorder of the childhood, it had been kept mostly same as before. However, it's become now Hadroa vaccine form without like. So uh, they, they believe it is uh, uh, really Hadroa vaccine form type uh, 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 lymphoproliferation with two subtypes, classic and uh, systemic. Severe uh, mosquito bite allergy is the same as before. Chronic active EBV disease instead of chronic active EBV infection in the, in the previous um, uh, diagnosis. So it is real uh, uh, disease. And systemic EBV positive T cell lymphoma is kept uh, uh, as it is. Now, a new entity, it had been uh, now put as a provisional, which is the primary nodal EBV positive T cell uh, NK lymphoma. So this is a new. Uh, provisional uh, entity, which is showing similar features of the extranodal NK uh, lymphoma in the nasal type. However, it is uh, uh, arising uh, primarily in lymph node. So this is uh, kept as a provisional. I do have, uh, you know, for, for my, you know, in my files, I have two cases that I present with nodal disease alone without extranodal involvement, and they show uh, uh, f uh, completely uh, morphology and immune phenotype of. Uh, uh, NK uh, lymphoma. Um, they add type 2 uh, refractory celiac disease as a precursor lesion. It is not lymphoma, but it is a precursor lesion to enteropathy associated T cell lymphoma. So, so that if you do uh, have a case uh, uh, like that, you should make in the comment that it, it is considered a precursor uh, uh, disease. They separated the indolent uh, clonal T cell lymphoproliferative disorder from NK, now they become two separate entities. Before it was uh, uh, included in one category, the T cell lymphoproliferative disorder, even the NK. Now it's become two different uh, categories. It is very indolent um, uh, uh, proliferation seen in the GI. Uh, if it is showing T cell immunophenotype, and uh, so it will be uh, T cell. And if it is showing NK features, it will be NK. But it's very indolent um, uh, uh, types. Primary cutaneous acral CD8 T cell lymphoproliferative disorder become now a distinct entity. Uh, previously, it was a uh, um, uh, provisional diagnosis, and they use lymphoproliferative disorder because it's very, very uh, uh, indolent uh, disease. Follicular T helper cell lymphoma now it's becoming the it include uh, 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 angioimmunoblastic and T follicular. Um, uh, or uh, uh, follicular, uh, T follicular uh, uh, T cell lymphoma and uh, uh, follicular helper T cell lymphoma in OS if it is, the features are not fitting with the follicular type or angioimmunoblastic. So angioimmunoblastic will not be used as the primary diagnosis. It should be kept, uh, 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 written like that, follicular T helper, uh, uh, um, uh, follicular helper T cell lymphoma, angioimmunoblastic uh, 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 type. Because you know all these categories actually they are arising from uh, 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 follicular helper T cells. So these are in regards of uh, the T cell neoplasm. Immunodeficiency associated lymphoproliferative disorder. There is there is no no much changes uh, in the ICC, but there is major changes in the WHO. So 
uh, quickly I will go over the WHO uh, classification. Um, uh, now, they now produce uh, the tumor-like lesions. Actually, the WHO, what they did, they did a very great effort. When you read the chapter of each disease, you will find, uh, uh, in addition, uh, uh, the criteria for diagnosis. They have the major criteria to make the diagnosis, the minor criteria to make the diagnose, diagnosis, and also they add differential diagnosis uh, for each entity. So this is actually very, very excellent effort that had been done by the new group of the WHO. In addition, they make a, uh, uh, a tumor-like lesions that resemble lymphoma, but it is not uh, lymphoma, which, uh, as you can see here, they are not included in the previous uh, diagnosis or the previous classification. Reactive B cell rich lymphoid proliferation that can mimic lymphoma. IgG4 related uh, disease, and it's, actually it is very uh, uh, troublesome if you, if you uh, and it really mimic uh, lymphoma, especially marginal zone lymphoma. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> big topic in very short time. Terrible. All right. So these are the main uh, changes in the, uh, the pr production of the uh, uh, precursor lesion, uh, the tumor-like lesion, uh, precursor basal lympho uh, or lymphoblastic uh, lymphoma. Mostly, it is the same. Uh, 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 there is no much uh, uh, changes. However, they remove only the translocation. Uh, uh, precisely from the old classification, they just put the two fusion uh, 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 genes. Now, in the uh, mature B cell uh, lymphoma, if, uh, one of the things that I need to say is the B cell pro lymphocytic leukemia is not anymore included. It does not exist according to WHO. It's most of these cases are put under the uh, splenic type B cell um, uh, uh, lymphoma. And m minority of cases, actually, they put under uh, uh, mantle cell lymphoma if they show cycling D1 uh, translocation. And uh, some of them are actually considered as progression of CLL. That's why it had been uh, removed from uh, uh, this classification. So generally, what we have, we have many uh, uh, changes. One of the things that I will, uh, I need just uh, take, uh, you know, just uh, a uh, small portion of time is the follicular lymphoma classification. Now, just uh, to summarize it, uh, the typing. Grade 1, grade 2, grade 3A, they all now called classic follicular lymphoma. Th uh, no more grading, uh, the, the old grading. So we have classic follicular lymphoma, which are including grade 1, grade 2, and 3A. We have uh, uh, now grade 3B is considered now as follicular large B-cell lymphoma under the category of follicular lymphoma. And if you have a blastoid appearance of the, uh, of the uh, centro or large centrocytes, or you have diffuse area, they call it uh, follicular uh, lymphoma with uh, uh, uncommon uh, features. So this, these are the three uh, types in grading of or subtyping of follicular uh, uh, lymphoma. So, um, sorry Allah for that, but uh, in the last slide I will a lot of things to be mentioned. No, now any lymphoma, any lymphoma with uh, immunodeficiency or on the or on the on basis of immuno either immunodeficiency or immunodysregulation, including post transplant uh, patient, it is not anymore a post trans uh, BTLD. Now they call it, uh, they put it under the lymphoma arising in immunodeficiency slash immunodysregulation. Any lymphoma, even if it is outside uh, the category of post-transplant, they should be included in this uh, category. All right. So here we are. What to choose? Actually, we don't need to think in this very, you know, uh, uh, tensely. I mean, currently these are what happen. Both are very respected group. The ICC actually, actually, they are the founder of the WHO classification. The WHO current one actually they are very. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, expert uh, 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 team. Uh, so what are the recommendations? You have made either. The most important thing is to discuss it between you guys in the lab and our colleague, the clinicians. In each hospital, you need to sit with them, present these classifications and what, what you need, because they are the one actually who will treat the patient. So you need to be with them at the same level. Sometimes you may continue using the old 
revised edition 2017 until things will uh, have a good track, or use the fifth edition, or use the ICC to 2020 uh, in your diagnosis, or you can use both. If you want to relieve yourself, you can put the diagnosis. This is according to the fifth ed edition. This is an example. Nodular site predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, WHO fifth edition. Second line, it is nodular site predominant large B cell lymphoma according to ICC, and keep it for, for them. But actually, the main thing is to discuss with your team and see what, what they need. And I ask the organizing committee, if possible, we need to make a workshop re soon to discuss actually these changes, either in the myeloid or lymphoid or histiocytic. We need to make like a, uh, s uh, uh, a separate uh, or one day at least, uh, one day uh, uh, workshop to discuss these changes. And thank you very much. <laughs>